Hello. So we are now moving to our unit seven lesson two, and we will have a somewhat like a more familiarization with those things we have mentioned in unit one. So unit seven lesson one is an overview, an overview. Okay, so let's get started. And I would like uh, to share my screen to you for our topic in lesson two, and it is the nature of nomination and restriction. What is nomination and restriction? So you have been acquainted with the different communication strategies that you can use to ensure a smooth and successful communication flow. Now in this lesson, two of these strategies, nomination and restriction will be focused on in more detail. Nomination refers to the act of a speaker wherein he or she opens and establishes a topic in the conversation or discussion. Now, when we say nomination, you are basically opening a topic for a conversation. That's how we usually start. And restriction, on the other hand, refers to the act of limiting what the participants can contribute to conversation or discussion. Learning about the nature of nomination and restriction will help participants understand the role in various types of con conversation. So basically like for example, when you are going to attend a meeting and then there is somewhat like um, uh, the list of the topics that you need to cover. So with those lists of topics that needs to be covered in that meeting, it is already being, res uh, being uh, shown that there is restriction on the topics that are not listed. Basically, we need to do this one so that our conversation will hit a target, we'll have a focus, and also we can control the time of that conversation or communication process. Now, there are two factors to consider for nomination and restriction social relationships and environment. Now, when we say social relationships, it determines the specific role of the participants, which is a factor for whether they can nominate the topic or restrict what other speakers can say in the conversation. So basically, the social relationship plays a very vital role in communication process. Okay, so uh, your role in the communication process process various when and how you should speak up your mind. Higher, authority, higher authorities refer to those who are assigned to control the flow of the conversation. Their role is to ask questions that will maintain the quality and productivity of communication. For example, during classes, teachers are considered as a higher authority since they facilitate the discussion during the class. So they are the facilitators and basically they are the one who control the communication process, such as opening a topic, restricting a topic, and also managing the turn-taking process. Lower authorities, on the other hand, <laughs> refer to the participants who start as listeners and later on become speakers when called on by the higher authorities, such as uh, teachers who are asking students to speak up their mind on a particular topic during recitation. They are usually called using their name. So they may also use nonverbal cues to indicate that they want to join a conversation or contribute to the discussion. Environment, it refers to the setting of the conversation. It also determines the role of the speakers. For example, in a classroom discussion, teachers nominate the topic or give restrictions to the participants. However, if the setting is a seminar led by students, there will be a segment for entertaining questions or comments from the teachers. The students then are the ones nominating the topic and providing restrictions for those who will join the discussion. One-on-one -on -one communication refers to a communication situation in which there are only two participants. Interviews and tutorials are common things for nomination and restriction. Uh, like tutorial and uh, an interview are almost always, but not always, a dyadic communication process. For example, in tutorial, the tutor may start the discussion by asking the student's question regarding his or her lessons and what he or she needs help with. 
once the tutor is done asking the question, the student is uh, can then answer. And because the tutor already asked questions, the student is then restricted addressing those particular questions. Another is group communication. Now, when we say group communication, this refers to communication situations in which there are more than two participants. So some examples of group communication that involve nomination and restriction are debates, wherein you are being given one particular topic. Another is panel discussion, class discussion, and forums. So basically, with those uh, mentioned, you can observe that uh, there is a restriction of topics and there is also a, of course, a nomination of a topic. In a panel discussion, for example, there is a moderator who is tasked with facilitating the discussion, which involves nominating the topic and restricting participants. And I guess that's it for our topic on the two uh, strategies involved in the communication process we were in, we have nomination and restrict restriction. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to share your point of view or your queries in our posting of this video, so in the comment section. And I guess that's it for this uh, lesson two in unit seven topic. Thank you so much.